Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my video tutorial for spatial data set analysis. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform the spatial data analysis for the Within the Fish Mouse Brain Receptor data set using the SquidPy package. So for today's demonstration, I'm going to use the SNICE tool replicate one data set. You can download this data set from the Within website. So first, let's load all the packages for today's analysis. So now we can use the read reading function from the SquidPy package to load the data. For today's analysis, we just need the count spell, cell by gene CSV file, and the meta file, cell metadata CSV file. So let's load the data and have a look at the observations and the variables in this data set. Okay, you can see we loaded the data as the data. And in this data set, we have more than 83,000 cells and 483 genes. You can see the observations and structured observations and the multi-layer observations. So once we loaded the data, we can calculate the quality control matrix use the QC matrix function. Let's calculate the quality control matrix. And also, you can see in the multiple observations, we have the blank genes. We can also calculate the percentage of unassigned blank transcripts. The percentage of unsigned blank transcripts can be used later to estimate the first discovery rate. So let's calculate the percentage. We can run. You can see it is about 0.38%. So now we have all the quality control metrics. We can plot the distribution of the quality control metrics. We are going to plot the total transcripts per cell, unique transcripts per cell, and the transcripts per field of VO. So let's make a three plot. So you can see down here we have a three plot. You can see the first one is the total transcripts per cell. The x-axis show the total count in each cell, and the y-axis show the cell numbers that have the same count. You can see majority of cells have the total count from 10 to 500, and the highest count is around 2000. The second figure show the unique transcripts per cell. Then the x-axis show the genes that have been detected in each cell, and the y-axis show the cell numbers that have the same number genes have been detected in this data set. Then the third figure show the transcripts per field of view. So we are going to follow the online tutorial to filter the cells with the minimum count as 10. So let's filter the cells. So until this step, we perform the basic quantity control analysis. After that, we can run a SCANPI workflow. First, to normalize the count per cell. Because we only have 483 genes here, so we are not going to identify any variable genes. We will use all the genes as features when we run the PCA. So the second step in the SCANPI workflow will be logarithm write the data. After that, we perform PCA. It is the principal component analysis for 
linear dimensional reduction. After PCA, we can compute a neighborhood graph. Then we can run UMAP to embed the neighborhood graph to the data. After UMAP, we can use the lead method to connect the cells. So now we can run the standard SCAMPI workflow. So we finished the standard SCAMPI workflow, and we connect the cells. So now we can plot the cells on UMAP. You can see after the analysis, we have 24 cell canisters in total from the analysis. You can see the highest number is 23 here. So you can see the cell canisters now. Then we can plot some mark genes for the cell canisters. For example, we can use the SLC17A7 as a mark gene for neurons to identify the neurons. And we can use Oligo1 as a mark gene for oligodendrocyte to identify the oligodendrocyte cell canisters. Let's run both mark genes. You can see we generated the plot. The first one is for the SLC17A7, so no cell canisters are neurons. And the second one is Oligo1. So this cell canister and this cell canister, they are oligodendrocyte. So we canast the cells now. Because this is a spatial data set, now we can use the spatial scat function from the SquidPy package to see the cell coordinators. If we set the color function as laden, we can see all the cell canisters on the tissue. Let's run. You can see we generated the spatial coordinators to show the cells on the mouse brain slides. You can see here we have 24 cell canisters, and the cell canisters are indicated by the color here. You can see different cell canisters have distinct localization in the mouse brain, which indicates that our analysis is reliable. So we can see the cell canisters on the tissue. I showed you we can use SLC17A7 and Oligo1 to see the neurons and the oligodendrocyte. So now we can plot SC17A7 and the Oligo1 on the tissue to see where are the neurons and where are the oligodendrocyte. Let's run. If you want to see all the genes, they are in the A data variable names. We have 483 genes in this data set. So you can see we generated the plot for both genes. You can see it's CL17A7 labels neurons in the cortex, hippocampus, and the one label all the oligodendrocyte in the mouse brain. So following the analysis, you can see we can realize the cell canisters on the tissue, and also we can realize the gene expression on the tissue. Because this is a mouse brain receptor data set, then we can have a look at the expression of different receptors in the mouse brain. First, we are going to look at the receptors for neural peptide. For example, we can look at the VIP receptor 1, receptor 2 for neural peptide Y, and the receptor 1 for gananin. VIP, MPY, and gananin are three important neural peptide. So let's run this code to see the receptor expression for neural peptide.
Okay, you can see we generated uh, three plots. The first one is for the VIP receptor one. The second one is the MPY receptor two. And the third uh, image is for the Ganadin receptor one. So we plot the receptor expression for neural peptide. We can also plot other receptors. For example, we can plot uh, the GPR receptor 37. It is a very important receptor for the oligodendrocyte myelination. Then the EPHJ5 is a receptor for classic axon guidance molecules, Afrin A5. And also we can plot uh, the growth factors receptor. For example, here we are going to use the FGF receptor 2 as an example. So let's make the plot to see the expression of GPR receptors, axon guidance molecules receptors, and the growth factors receptors. So you can see from the plot, we can see their expression in different regions of the mouse brain. This data set also has probes for the chemokines receptors. For example, we can use CCR2. It is a receptor for CCL2, CSCFR1 receptor, and the CXCR4 receptor. If you open the cell by gene, CSV file, you will see all the gene names as the column names in the data set. Then you can select the receptors you are interested in to make a plot. So for the final demonstration, we are going to plot the receptors for camel kinds. Let's run. So you can see we generated the, the plot to show the expression for the CCR2, CSCF1R, and the CXCR4 receptor expression in the mouse brain. Okay, so that's uh, today's demonstration. I showed you how to load the data and uh, run quality control analysis standard scanpy workflow. Then make a plot to show the cell clusters on the tissue and also make a plot to see the gene expression in the mouse brain. Once you have the data set analyzed in this way, you can perform more analysis. I'm going to stop from here. Hope my demonstration can help your data analysis. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't to do so, and share my videos with your friends. Thank you.